downtown Boise, Idaho, the perfect backdrop as we welcome you in to the Road to X Games qualifier, live from the Idaho State Capitol. We come to you from Road Skate Park in downtown Boise. What's up and welcome everybody. I am Brandon Graham, join alongside X Games legend, Scotty Kramer, and it's all about BMX Park. We've got 12 guys competing for just six spots to get into X Games Minneapolis. Five of the 12, Scotty, have X Games gold medals. It just shows just how stacked this BMX Park competition is today. We have the best of the best, and we also have some other guys that are just as hungry trying to get medals of their own. Yeah, talk to us about a rider that may be off the radar that we should have our eyes on today. A rider that I believe you guys should know about is Jose Torres. This is the first time I'm actually watching him ride in person, so I'm coming into this as a fan as well. He goes extremely high, he's got tons of tricks, so much bike control, and I just met him for the first time and it was a really cool experience and I'm excited to see how he steps up to the plate today. Well, let's kick it off, men's BMX Park Final. Here we go. We've got an insane crowd out here on hand at Road Skate Park, Scotty. They're ready to watch six of these 12 make it in to the finals at Minneapolis, and we introduce our lineup for the day. So here we go, we have Pat Casey starting this one off. Pat Casey arrived from California. He is no stranger to X Games at all, and I'm sure he's gonna be throwing down today. Yeah, Pat Casey. Got two X Games medals to his name, one silver, one bronze, still in search of that gold. Speaking of gold, how about the gold medal he earned in front of his hometown crowd at X Games Austin in 2014, Chase Hawk. Chase Hawk, amazing rider, known for his style. I'm so excited to see him ride this course to shreds today. Here's a guy we're excited to see making his X Games debut out of Russia, Eric Rizev. So Eric is a technical rider. He's got some of the biggest tricks out there. Let's see what he does today. And someone who's no stranger to the X Games stage, owner of six park medals, five of them gold, Daniel Dares. Daniel Dares, he is the best. He, he's a master when it comes to getting a gold medal in BMX Park. It's unbelievable that he was able to get five of them. He was in wild card in Minneapolis last summer, ended up competing Larry Edgar. Larry Edgar, this guy can go higher than anybody on the course. Let's see what he does over the hip underneath the bridge. 35 years old, he is the crafty veteran of this group, trying to add to his four X Games medals and 18 appearances, Gary Young. Gary Young, such a unique rider. He turns riding into such an art when he's on the course. He's gonna have the best lines, guaranteed. And this was a fun guy to watch out here at the Boise Qualifier last year. We saw him in dirt, we saw him in best trick, we saw him at park, Nick Bruce. Nick Bruce is the strongest rider on the course right now. He's gonna be blessing some of the biggest tricks, guaranteed. A superb X Games debut at Minneapolis last summer. He took fourth in park, but won dirt gold in his X Games debut, Colton Walker. Colton Walker is so dialed at such a young age. You know, the fact that he's here competing for another chance to get another gold medal, this is gonna be cool to watch. And someone with the biggest medal collection out here today, trying to find his 10th X Games medal in Minneapolis this summer. Can he get into park though? Dennis Anderson. Dennis is one of the most well-rounded BMX riders to ever do it. We'll see what he does. And this one's such a fan favorite, a terrific story. He's got one bronze medal to his name. He's been competing at X Games since 2012, Michael Aaron. Michael's got a heart of gold, and what I saw in practice, he is gonna be bringing it today. And a guy off the top you said you were excited to see for the first time in person. The fans are in for a treat, Jose Torres. I just met him before, you know, I had a little conversation with him, and he was such a nice guy, and I'm so excited to see him go on the course. And this is our top-ranked qualifier from eliminations yesterday. We saw him compete at dirt at last summer in Minneapolis, trying to get into park, Brandon Lupos. Brandon Lupos is one of the most talented riders to come out of Australia. The amount of tricks that this guy is able to squeeze into his run and the consistency of pulling these big tricks is completely mind-blowing. The thing I love about this qualifier, and it got introduced last summer at Boise, is we completely open up the path 
into how you get to X Games and how you do it. You come out here to this Road to X Games qualifier and you compete in this format. As we said, 12 riders, three runs each, 45 second runs. The single best score counts with just the top six qualifying to meet our podium who's pre-qualified from last summer. So today, this is going to be the best chance for somebody who might not have their name out there be able to get their shot to be riding. Now for me, looking at this condition, like of the situation of the amount of people that are competing right now and the only six make it in to the big show, for me, I'd be terrified going into this <laughs> event. This is like a playoff for when it comes to BMX. And uh, this is something I've never really experienced before. So these guys have their work cut out for them. Yeah, the thing that's guaranteed with 12 guys out there, this is 12 athletes who absolutely have the chops to be competing at X Games, which means there's going to be at least a couple of big name guys, some household names who will not make it on. You're right, but you know what? There's always a time when that's got to flip eventually. You know, sometimes the guys that are on the top, they have to take a step down and make some room for the guys that are coming up. You know, like having Jose Torres, a guy who is from South America riding today. This is such an awesome opportunity for him. Right, and you would otherwise not get that chance when it just comes to the usual invites you see from other contests, making it completely transparent. But we're kicking off our final with Pat Casey. So Pat Casey, this guy has so much style, and he has the ability to do so many big tricks, and you will even see him use the free coaster, and that gives him the ability to ride backwards on his bike. But so far, so good. Huge alley of 270 over the hip. He's going to be flown around in the deep end. That's going to be a lot of the riders today. Wow, beautiful 270 double tail whip. Barsman, the Barsman fly out. And uh, he's up on the slower area right here. This is where the smaller ramps are. You know, a lot of guys are going to be doing their big tricks down in the deep bowl. So let's see how Pat ends the rest of his run. Wow, beautiful tail whip pocket air right there. Transferring in that corner is really difficult. 540 at the end to, to tap it off. So good first one for that. Yeah, a strong run for the X Games vet. Can you just speak to, after your countless years of competing, certainly at X Games and contests, to be the first guy in to drop into a final, especially with a field this stack? No one wants to be in that oh, position, it's, right? It's never fun. It's, it's honestly, it's the worst thing. You know, you go from zero to 60 just like that, you know, as soon as they say your name. So for me personally, in this three run format, you got a really good situation of being able to kind of get the butterflies out in the first run and maybe the second run you can start upping it and then the third run is your chance to really iron out everything so even being the first rider it's a better situation to have three runs and have the best run count yeah we have 24 total medals combined for these finalists here out here today. I just got that note at Road Skate Park. Just incredible. An 80.66 for Pat Casey, and the bar is officially set. So we move on now to Chase Hawk. This is a guy we haven't seen at X Games since 2016 in Austin. Got a chance to spend a little bit of time with him last week, and he was psyched to be out here. He missed the qualifier last year, said it had a bit of an injury bug, but he's excited to get out here and get back to the big show. Wow, look at that beautiful tabletop transfer. Chase is known to have this loan style, and he's actually a guy that's been known to go to any skate park, and it makes it look like he's been ridden there before because he just has the ability to just naturally look at these transitions and figure out the best lines around the skate park. And I've always been so jealous of the fact that Chase has been you know, so capable of doing that. So look at right there, using the peg, doing that ice pick grind across that channel, and going into a manual. And the difficulty about that, Chase, Chase Hawk is a brake, brakeless rider, so, you know, not having the brakes to be able to feather your front wheel down, so that makes it really difficult. So Final all five for seconds for Chase Hawk. Wow, big 270 pullout right there. But good first line. I think Chase did a really good uh, first, you know, run out there. I know Chase Hawk is going to be up in it, and I know he is so hungry and so motivated to get into X Games again after missing it last year. Former pro BMXer, and he runs XGames.com. Our own Brian Tunney always likes to say about Chase, everyone's taking a certain type of line at a park, and then there's Chase Hawk, who does something so unique and does something so unconventional to what you'll see from the rest of the field. It's completely true. <laughs> I mean, I've seen it countless times over and over again. I've been on so many trips with Chase, and uh, he's, he's such a good friend of mine, and it's so awesome to see him out here riding at his peak. Yeah, and that to me, going back to Austin in 2014, had not yet earned an X Games medal to win gold in front of his hometown. I look back at those three years we had in Austin, and that might be the highlight that rises above the rest, at least for me personally. No, oh, it has to be. I mean, and that course right there was just absolutely perfect for Chase, you know, in his style. He did some things in that bowl that I didn't think were going to be possible. 
you know, Chase was able to step above. But first score coming in, 77.66. So a strong run number one for Chase Hawk. Again, each of the riders getting three attempts on this course, but the pace being set. We move our attention now to Eric Rizef. So Eric, I just met for the first time this year. He's a Russian rider. This guy has such an ability to cram in so many tricks in one air. Um, so I've seen him do multiple tail bars for combinations. And we'll see if he can transfer over onto the, to the uh, concrete skate park today. But so far, so good. He's got a really good solid line. And there we go, just as I was talking. Right. Ali Hu bars him into downside tail, and that tail was opposite direction. Ooh, triple Whoa. tail whip over the head. <laughs> Barsman to tuck no hander. So he's cramming in a ton of oh my variety gosh. of tricks. He's covering so in. much real estate, still with 20 seconds to ride with. Yeah, so here he goes. He's on the slower part of the course. Let's see how he redirects and gets this going again. So tuck no hander back into the deep end. Pocket air of his own, doing a little tabletop. Going over to the hip. Ooh, tail to tuck no hander. That's a tough one right there. Well, we're seeing such great variety in this run. Just how wow. vital is that when it comes to scoring from this judging panel? You know, for me, variety is crucial. And not even as, you know, looking for results from a judge, but just as a BMX rider, you want to have variety. You don't want to be somebody known as doing the same tricks over and over again. But he's crammed in so much. Here we go with the triple tail up over that hip. That's three tail ups over one hip right there and a concrete skate park. Absolutely amazing. 360 downside tail whip right there, and uh, that's a regular 360, meaning that's his normal rotation, but the tail whip is opposite. You know, we talked about Pat Casey being the first one to drop in, and that's an unenviable position. How about Eric as an X Games rookie amongst all of these superstar names? I mean, that's a tough one, too, to drop in. You know what? I'll never forget my first pro competition. I was so scared. I didn't even want to enter it, but uh, my parents ended up like signing me up for it because they knew that I was fully capable. <laughs> and all my friends, like, were, you know, they were in on this as well. But uh, I dropped in. I'm never so scared in my life. And I ended up qualifying first, but uh, I was terrified. So I can speak from experience. It's not fun. Parents know best. I think they knew what you were doing there. So here's Daniel Dares. By the way, Reset score coming in at an 83, taking over the top spot early. But here's Daniel Dares trying to add to his six X Games medals. So Daniel's been riding for a really long time, and he's been riding at such a top level as well. I've, com I've competed against Daniel for years. I was just going to say, you've had some great battles with him here on the yeah. X Games stage. I've been on both sides of being ahead and behind him, and it's been a, it's been a pleasure. It really has. So, uh, but look at him so far, so good. Classic Daniel Dares, tons of flow. And uh, given that classic 360 tail up over the hip, Daniel's known to kick the bike away from him. That's a very unique style. There's a go, there's a flare, uh, tabletop variation there, but he ends up tweaking the bars behind his leg into a flip over the hip, really solid. And this is first run, so I know these guys are got so much left in the bag, you know, they want to get a score on the board so they can know where they're at. 360 tuck no hander, heading back into the deep end right here. And that will do it for Daniel Dares. And we're seeing clean runs across the board early in run number one, Scotty. You know what? That's that's the thing about run number one, especially when there's a three-run format. These guys want to get a run on the board. They don't want to go out there and do their best trick because it's really hard to be going out there and getting your best run in the first thing and hoping that's uh, you know the best you've got. You got to play your cards right. But here's some replays of Daniel. I'll leave 360 uh, tail up over the hip. And uh, here's that flare variation. As you can see, he twists the bars behind his leg right there. And he's the only one I know that does that variation. So Five really cool gold medals to his name. But the last time he was on top of the podium at X Games was in Munich back in 2013. So it's been a little while. Yeah, and I was I was sitting in the second place on that one. <laughs> you know? And uh, I, I can tell you what, I was, uh, I was having a really good day. So Daniel was having a really, really good day. So that was the last time he won. That's the last time he actually earned an X Games medal. So as we said, it's been a solid five years for Dares. An 80.66 that ties him with Casey for second place. You know what, you got to get the first runs out there. You're going to see a lot of guys just kind of going in there and getting at that 80 range, I think, until the second to third run. So we'll see what the rest of the guys bring. So here's Larry Edgar. He's been riding a lot in practice. Went down really hard on his left shoulder before the contest. Yeah, I watched the crash. It wasn't pretty at all. But Larry is one of the toughest guys I've ever seen on a BMX bike. His strength, I mean, literally, is, he could enter like strongman competitions. He's that strong. <laughs> Wow, Whoa. huge air. Did you see how close oh he was to that bridge gosh. right there? I need an amplitude meter. <laughs> we might have to get somebody out here to raise the bridge in a little bit. <laughs> 
Good run though so far. Massive flare right there. Larry is known for going higher than everybody else out there. I mean, like I'm saying, he's one of the strongest guys and he has that ability to show up at the bottom of a ramp and just something about him. He just goes three feet higher than everyone else, even though it might look like they're going the same speed. He's that strong. So Larry into the, I mean, the bowl corner right there, ending it with the 360 fakey ball, stepping off right at the buzzer there. Love Larry Edgar's story out of Corona, California. Actually worked as a valet at Angel Stadium in Anaheim until 2012 when he started making enough money riding BMX. How cool is that? Now he's out here living the dream. So here's some replays. Look how high he is. Look at the front wheel compared to the bridge right there. That's unbelievable. So crazy. But that's Larry Edgar for him. But the power that he rides with allows him to get that height. It's the truth. And, you know, when you go that high, you got to be prepared to land that hard, you know? And Larry can handle it, no problem. Double tail whip from Larry. You know, he's capable of so many different tricks. Not only does he go really high and do uh, tabletops and hold them for, you know, half of his run, but he can go out there and do double tail and land perfect. We have a new leader. Larry Edgar with an 84.66 takes over the top spot. Yeah, you know, you got to respect the height on that one. If you go high like that, you're going to get a huge score. We move on to Gary Young. Four X Games medals, a gold, a silver, and a pair of bronzes. His last medal coming in 2013. He won gold back in Barcelona. Yeah, Gary rode amazing in Barcelona back in 2013. It was an awesome contest to watch, but let's see how Gary does today. One-handed tabletop, huge over the hip. Gary's got tons of style, and like I was saying earlier, he has the best lines out there. He has the ability to like navigate himself around the course. Every ramp that he shows up on, like it, it's, it's, it's like it's pre-planned and perfect, but he does it so naturally. It flows so easily. Wow, did you see that right there? I don't know if a lot of you guys noticed that. He just hit a 270 nose bump over that hip right there. Good use of course. The nuance to his riding is just so spectacular. Ooh. And we talk about him being the oldest rider in this field, but there's such a classic and timeless style to his riding. Uh, I totally agree with that one. So Gary Young, he's, he's, he's that kind of guy. And it's I've always been you know such a fan of just watching him show up at a skate park and just seeing how he portrays his riding on the course. But good solid run right there from Gary Young. So a nice way to kick off this Boise qualifier final for Gary Young. We'll wait to see how the judges score the San Diego native, but can't ask for a better start from Gary. So here's that one-handed tabletop over the hip. Classic right there. I mean, that's just picture perfect. And uh, let's see, here's the nose bonk. This is the one I was talking about. See, he hits his nose on the front of that thing purposely, which is amazing. Good use, of course, from Gary. And then this trick right here is so difficult. Like, you won't see any of the guys that are currently in this competition doing that because that is such a high-level trick right there to be doing, especially on, like, an eight- or nine-foot bowl corner right. or around the pocket. You know, it's, it's amazing. It's called a downside old peg run. So we're waiting on this score from the judges, really taking their time with this one. Usually that means they like what they saw. And Larry Edgar in the lead. We're still early here on run number one in our three-run final. And what's awesome about Gary, he's always got a smile on his face. You know, he's such a positive person, and it's so cool to see. He's got two kids, he's such a great dad, and uh, it's amazing to see him, you know, just evolving, not only as a BMX rider, but as a person. I love Gary Young. And he's at that age where, in maybe some other disciplines at X Games, they have to start thinking about potentially that next chapter, but Gary's riding is still so elevated. There's no reason to think about shutting it down. Yeah, I mean, you got to keep that thought completely out of your head if you're Gary Young because he's nowhere near slow now. And, and an 83.33 for Young, very strong score, putting him into second place. He's got to feel good after that one, you know, first run, get second place. But you know what, we got a lot more guys going. So we move along to Nick Bruce, who we enjoyed seeing make his debut in Boise last summer, qualifying into X Games Minneapolis. He was an alternate in 2016. Oh, whoa, oh my man. goodness, Nick. We're Look just getting that. started, buddy. See, I was saying that the guys are going to play it safe on the first <laughs> run, and yeah. then Nick Bruce comes out here and does yeah. a flare opposite downside tail whip on the bank quarter right there. But you know what? He's back up on. He's going to finish it out, looks like. 
Smart move, though, at the same time. That's what I was going to ask you. Speak to when you do go down on your first hit, on your first run. That's got to suck the wind out of your sails a little bit, especially if you know you got two more attempts. Do you get back on and just try to block it out, or do you know this is already a throw? Well, it takes, it takes the wind out of your sails more than just a little bit, I'll tell you that. There's times where I've fallen, and I'm just like, I, I just don't even want to be where I'm at right now. You know, like I just want to go and just restart in a tent somewhere and wait to, for them to call my name and then go out there and try my best shot. But you know what? In a situation like this, there's tiebreakers, there's things like that. So you've got to get on your bike and you've got to get a score out there because you don't know the situation. Like right. Yourself. That's a really good point. Yeah, Nick Bruce really took Road Skate Park by storm last year. He came in first place in this event yeah, in 2017. So here's the crash right here. You can see him rotating, but he did not pull away from the quarter pipe enough. And you can see his back wheel was tagging the top part, and he couldn't rotate as much as he needed to. So tough break for Nick Bruce, but you know what? Maybe that's what he needed to get the butterflies out after run number one. Still got two more runs. And uh, when it comes to riding BMX in a competition format, like this is a gift to have three runs and best run count. So there you see Colton Walker, who had about as good of a debut as you can ask for at X Games Minneapolis last year, earning his way in the park. Also winning gold in X Games Dirt. Let's hear from Colton. A big dream of mine and like an aspiration I had was just to get to X Games. So to get invited was a dream come true, but to actually podium and win a uh, gold medal my first year going was just icing on the cake. It was crazy. I love it. This is a sick skate park. You don't have to pedal whatsoever. You can do an entire run and not have to pedal, which is pretty rare. But it's so smooth, and you can blast airs. It's, it's sick. I love it. Coming back this year, I was super pumped just to be in Boise and obviously to be able to ride a qualifier for X Games. So, I mean, it's, it's sick. I love it here. So Colton had a top five finish last year here in this event that got him in the park. And it should be noted, Colton was born in Minneapolis. His family moved to Wisconsin when he was seven years old, but he had a large cheering section at US Bank last year. Yes, he did. I remember calling that contest. Wow, look at that beautiful t double tail of the barsman right there. And uh, calling that contest was un unreal to see that energy. And you could definitely tell the difference that helped him, you know, get to where he needed to be on that podium for sure. But so far so good on this run. He's got the ability to cram in so many tricks in one air. Just like that. Opposite tail whip. Oh, oh no. no. Wow, that was a freak accident right there. He went to go pedal to get speed, but his feet weren't on the pedals right. So as he pedaled around, they threw his shoe off the pedal. That's a that's a weird one right there, but you know what? I don't want to say that was fully on jitters or anything like that because sometimes when it comes to doing tricks and you're cramming three tricks in one air like that, you're running out of time. And sometimes your feet don't land on the pedals where they yeah, need to be. We'll see where it went wrong. Again, so multi-talented, hoping to get back in the park this summer in Minneapolis. And it should be noted, the first X Games rookie since Stephen Murray to win dirt gold back in 2001. That's amazing, and that's that's dirt jump royalty right there. Right. Oh, there's his feet blowing off. And that's what I think it was. I think his feet were on the crank arms, so he went to go pedal, and as the crank spun around, there was no pedal there when his uh, when his foot was looking for it. But you see that score. The judges liked what they saw to that point. If he can build on that and clean that up, be interesting to see where he gets scored. Again, if you're just joining us, it's a 12-man final here at the Road to X Games Qualifier in Boise, Idaho, Road Skate Park. The top six will be moving on to Minneapolis. Will that include Dennis Anderson, who drops in now? Dennis Anderson is one of the most well-rounded bike riders on the planet. Look at that, inverted fast plant on the skinny part of the column as well. I don't know if uh, a lot of people notice that, but there's like a flat edge right there. Did so huge tail transfer, and uh, I've been saying that a lot because this guy does tons of transfers. He's so you know well known around BMX for having such a fluent style. Oh, oh, oh he went for the double tie ride, and his back wheel did not get on that. So uh, bummer right there, because that was a really good start to the run. Yeah, he knows it. But he has such an ability to recover. Like, he's so mentally strong when it comes to riding BMX in competitions. Um, he can go out there and he can figure out, you know, what he needs to do and get his head right. And Dennis Anderson, honestly, he is literally one of the best guys out there on a BMX bike. And there you see it with Chase Hawk. They've been working together on the Born and Raised series, which started in Austin and now is taking up space in San Diego, Dennis's hometown. 
such an awesome opportunity to give younger riders you know, a platform to showcase their riding. So um, I hope that that keeps on growing and we see a lot more of that. In yeah, I'd love to see that pop in every pro city. It would be really, it's, it's needed, you know, and uh, it's cool to see big time pros like Chase and Dennis giving back to BMX because, you know, you get to a point where you realize, right, maybe I need to flip a script. And, you know, I'm, I'm there currently, you know, with my YouTube channel. I try to do videos all the time that yes, are going to, you know, get, you know, kids into BMX and try to give back. But look at Mike Keller and this oh, guy right man. here. He is such style. He's the, he's the coolest. He really is such a positive person. Right. You, you, you hit it on the head. Always a smile. Says hi. What's up to everybody? Does it cool guy anybody? Just wants to shake your hand. Always seems to be having the best time of his life every time he's here. It's the truth. And he's carrying straight over into his riding style. You can see he's so upbeat when he rides. And his ability to, you know, kind of look at bike riding a little bit differently, you know, because he has a different footing than a lot of riders. So he's got some different tricks out there. A beautiful flare over that small hip right there, moving nice and fast. And uh, let's see what he's got. Turn down over the hip. Oh, fakey to fakey what? on the deep end. <laughs> yes. <laughs> First time we saw a rider go fakey, which is riding backwards. How? Mike Kellaren, so much fun. Look at that smile on his face. <laughs> like it's a demo. And I hope you guys can hear the crowd right now because they're loving it. Yeah. You know, his positive energy just feeds off of everyone. Right That's now. the loudest they've been all day. Awesome to see for Mike Kellaren. And it should be noted, we know him from Vert and Big Air at X Games. It's cool to see him trying to earn his way in and park as well. Oh, you know, and I'm going to go out there and say, it. you know, this has been a, a long time in the making because he came to my skate park once and I rode with him and he approached the skate park differently than any other rider I've ever seen show up there. And he rode it like a professional, his first time riding it. So I'm glad to see him out here getting a chance to showcase his park skills and it's paying off right now. Check him out. The top six moving on an 87.33. Michael Laird jumps up into first place. Amazing right there. Oh, I'm so glad to see Michael, you know, going out there and just representing, you know, doing his version of BMX for the world to see. And that was such a great run. It just, and now it's got me like excited for what he's got on attempt number two, because you know he's going to come out and completely shake that up. Oh, for sure. You know, all these guys are. So here's a guy you've had your eyes on. You just met before this contest. There's a lot of energy around Jose Torres. I'm so excited to watch him run today. Beautiful. Whoa. Oh. Indian air over the hip. And I was trying to say, uh, you know, the reason why I w love watching him ride is because of stuff like that. He just goes so high on everything he does. Look at that beautiful alley-oop downside tail up, and he's catching perfect transition in everything he's landing. And that means you want to land really high up on the transition, land by the coping, you know, and be in control. Huge double tail up over that hip. Ooh, bars from Tucker Hander into the, you know, the smaller part of the area. And usually this is where guys slow down, and you can still see he's bringing huge air right there. Wow, very interesting use of course. You know, there's a smaller part up there, and he decides to put in his run, but he's got a good flow still to it, so. Well, this is the first time we've seen the 23-year-old out here, and with a run like that, he's got Minneapolis on the mind. It's well-deserved, I mean, his, you know, ability, you know, to be showing up in these contests and get his name out there, you know, over and over again. Like, it's been awesome to watch, and I'm so glad we get to see him in person, because look at, he's delivering. Huge bar spin flare on that right there. He was a good six feet out, seven feet out, if anything. But as you said, this is a prime example of if we didn't have this qualifying series, the odds would be against him to get to a major X Games event. Now the path is in front of him, and we get to be introduced to Jose Torres, and then he puts down an 86.66, good enough for second place. Well deserved, well deserved. And, you know, I'm really happy for him. I just met him for the first time today, and he was such a nice person. You know, he doesn't really speak too much English, but we were able to have a little conversation. I let him know just how, uh, how much I appreciate his riding. DMX, it's a universal language, my friend. It really is. When it comes to the tricks, you got tricks called foof news and a boobka. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know any language of that. That makes any sense. And, and then there was one, our final rider of the field, our group of 12. He was our top ranked qualifier. Get ready for Brandon Lupos out of Sydney, Australia. And oh, by the way, X Games Sydney coming in October.
Brandon Lupos has so many big tricks, and he has the ability to do these tricks back to back. Let's see what he does. Triple oh, attack, oh, his oh. own over the head, following Eric right there. Huge suck no hander on that defense. All right, he's going for the flare. Ooh, he's looking for the look back there, but he got a little caught up in the bike. First run, though. Nice under for the fly out. And that's amazing that you caught that, because I think to the untrained eye, they wouldn't have even seen that he didn't get what he was going for. Yeah, you know, uh, if there's times when it comes to BMX where we can kind of like, you know, ooh, flare work right there, I don't want to miss that one. But there's times in BMX, you can see just how they're setting up to be able to do their trick. You know what their body placement is, and uh, I'm pretty sure that that's what he was looking for. But I mean, he ended it off with a flare whip right there and an opposite flare as well, which uh, means that he rotated the spin of the flare the opposite direction. But there's the uh, 360 uh, downside tail whip over the hip. Lupos joining that growing contingent of talented Aussie riders like Kyle Baldock and Logan Martin. Calls Sydney home, our top ranked qualifier, making his X Games debut. So there's the flare tail whip right there, and he's got those so perfect every try. It's absolutely amazing to see. So we await his run one score. Michael Laren setting the pace with that 87.33 and 85.33. So good enough for third place, putting him into that top six group. You know what, after that, and you see that score come in, he's got to feel great about this. Because Absolutely. he definitely had some issues there. And uh, you know, his first run, and you are currently sitting in a, you know, a spot where you're pretty comfortable at this point. So with that, run one is officially in the books here at Road Skate Park. And it's Michael Laren leading the way with that 87.33. The position you're going to want to keep your eyes on, though, throughout this broadcast, that sixth spot. Rizav currently has that, the Russian rider with that 83, as the top six will be moving on to X Games Minneapolis. And we're ready to set it off with run number two. It's Pat Casey sitting in that seventh spot just outside of the top six. We'll see if he can shake that up right now. Uh, we're going to be talking about that six and seven spot a lot today because that is, that's the make or break. You know, the goal is to get in the sixth spot so you can make it to the big event, you know, and it's going to be a point where these guys are going to be so competitive to get into that point as these runs go on today. So let's see how run number two goes. Ooh, nice tuck no hand to transfer out of that deep end into the hip. Bar spin flare of his own on the corner. Head back over towards the hip with a double tail whip. All right, let's see if Pat steps it up right here. Beautiful toboggan. You know, Pat has the ability to do big tricks, but he also has the ability to, you know, do tricks with style as well. As you can see with that toboggan where you point the handlebars down. So. Final 15 seconds for Pat. So he's heading back into the deep end. This is the point where you know you want to start bringing your speed, and you want to you want to you know go into these events and end with a bang just like that. Beautiful double tail with pocket air right there. That's such a difficult trick. So, and, and I was talking to the judges today. And one thing that they mentioned to me was always you know you want to finish with a bang. You want to be able to put an exclamation point on your run. And these guys got to really keep that you know into consideration when they're planning out their situation uh, their runs. The importance of kicking off your run with a trick that stays with the judges and then the ender. Obviously, you want to have that filling in between, but it seems like they have a, a memory that scans what have you done for me lately, and that last trick sometimes on a mediocre or mid-level run can be all the difference if you've got a banger to finish. You're totally right about that, but you know what, Pat Casey, as you can see right before that, that clip, he did the double tail whip in the pocket right there, and nobody's done that, so that's a really good one to bring, be bringing to the end. So an 81.66, better than his run one score, but just a testament to the riding out here today, that's not even top six territory. This is gonna be, this is gonna be a long day for these guys. I mean, sitting there looking at that six and seven mark over and over again. Now here's Chase Hawk, currently on the outside looking in as well. Ninth place out of Austin, Texas. We call Austin Chase's town. I happen to live there. He's kind of a big deal, trust me on that. He's got his own day in August, Chase Hawk Day. <laughs> it's absolutely amazing. It's well deserved. You know, everybody loves Chase Hawk. I've known Chase Hawk for a really long time. And, you know, his impact on BMX over the years is going to last forever. So his run's looking really good, though. So far, he's got a lot of flow, a lot of speed. And now he's going back for that ice pick grind, and that one as well, leading into the manual. 
popping up to oh, ah, one in. Chase. And with that wave to the crowd, he realizes that's not the run he's looking for. So he'll have to clean things up on his third and final attempt. Yeah, so on that uh, that mess up right there, he just lost a little bit of balance over that manual to 180. And that's the risk when you take tricks like that and yeah. you put them into your run when there's there's a level of difficulty that's, that's constant on that. When you have like a one trick, you know, air, it's it's a little bit different, you know, because it happens so fast. But that's a trick that lasts, you know, over, you know, a four or five second span. But beautiful 360 tabletop over the hip, classic chase hawk right there. And there's the uh, ice pick grind, one of the only guys using the peg so far today. So that run two score for him at a 69.66. He'll hold on to his run one score, but ninth place is where he will stay. We move on to Eric Risef, our lone Russian in the field, although we did have two additional Russian riders in qualifiers yesterday. What's up with the Russian BMX scene these it's days? It's amazing. Like it, it felt like it came out of nowhere, but these guys are literally doing world's first tricks all the time. And it's almost like it's getting, becoming normal to them. So, I mean, I love it. I love seeing it. Okay, so Eric is uh, starting to off a little bit slow portion of his run. He hasn't really released the big trick that he's known for yet. Just like the triple tail. Oh, there it is. Oh, no. He landed a little bit low on the bike, and he wasn't standing up on the pedals. And he didn't have the ability to command the bike around the bowl corner like he wanted to, so he actually had to fly out. So that's a shame. Uh, that was his first big <laughs> trick of the run. That was so tough to see, especially after the triple tail whip. Yeah, so there's the uh, Aliu bar spin. And uh, the, ne the next hit was the triple tail. Whip, and, and you'll see right here, he lands a little low. And like it's, it's almost like he didn't have enough air, enough control. So when he landed low, his body kind of glued down like oh, that. Oh, you're right. Brought the weight forward. And he didn't have the ability to command the bike to where he needed to go. So he'll hold on to that run one score. And he's holding on to that six spot, that bubble spot. <laughs> It's got to be a good feeling to look up there and know that you are in the sixth spot, but knowing that you have so much talent that's about to be dropping in, right? Oh, that, that's going to really. I have no you. problem with being in the sixth spot when uh, the whistle blows and it's the end of the contest. I don't like it early in run number two. Here's Daniel Dares, who's going to try and bump him out. He's sitting in eighth place. Ooh, double tail of air right there. Nice blow, nice control. Talk no hander. Ooh, tail transfer. Daniel's got the ability to find really good solid lines, you know, especially as he gets older as a BMX rider. I feel like he's uh, maturing on his bike. And he's getting the ability to incorporate the big tricks like the Ali double tail right there, but he also has the you know, ability now to find the run and flow around, so he's looking really good. Dares made his X Games debut. Whoa, Whoa. That was big. See, that was like a that was like a 450 double tail, but the way he took off made it look like a 540, and that makes it even harder, so. Good trick. Dares making his debut in 2006 at LA when he earned a bronze. So Daniel definitely upped the ante after his first run, you know, and we talked about that. These guys are going to be doing that for the next two runs here. It's crucial. You have to do that in a situation like this. Uh, and that's a guy who may know this format better than anyone. Upping the ante, knowing exactly where he is right after run number one, a clean first attempt. Now I start climbing the ladder by adding just a little here and a little there. That's what veterans do right there. So look at this. So many double tails in this run. You know, it's ability to fire back and forth on these things. Amazing. There's that flare we were talking about. He twists the bars behind his leg right there. And this is the move right here that, that had me pretty in shock. And so it's like a 450 double tail whip, but it's a, the way he took off, turned it into like a 540, which is awesome. And that's the last trick of his run, which was the flare no hander. So he's definitely going to see a better, uh, better score, in yeah, my opinion. No doubt that will replace the 80.66, but how high will it get him? He's looking at that uh, 82 mark right there. An 82.66, so he moves up one spot into seventh, but still out of that top six. But if his strategy holds true, then we can expect a little bit of an increase there on his third and final run. Yeah, I'm excited to see what he incorporates after this because, you know, one thing that might come back to bite him is he did multiple double tail ups in that run, and the judges do want to see variety. If you're doing the same trick over and over again, that's when you're actually going to be, you know, hurt instead, even though that 540. You know, a double tail over that 450 double tail was amazing. But look at that tail of transfer from Larry Edgar right there to start running things Larry off. Edgar was in the lead early on run number one, and he's been bumped down to fourth place. Still in the top six, though. Ooh, huge air again. Huge inver over that hip. 
absolutely amazing. His ability to go high is just, it's second to none. I mean, he's won the high air competition at the Vans uh, event <laughs> multiple years now. And it's, it's insane. It's, it's insane to see, it really is. He had a first place finish in Ooh. April at the Vans Pro Cup. Yeah, so right there, Larry, um, he just had to put an end to his run. It, it almost looked like he was going to do a double tail with the way he pumped off of that transition. And it was like the bike was getting away from him, and he decided to stop it at one to be safe. Um, that that, that could have been, or he might have just pumped a little bit too hard. But he did a lot of big things in this run. Now, look at this huge oh, air. I th wow. Look at that. I thought he was going to hit the overpass. <laughs> He's close. I swear to you. He's right there. It's amazing. Wow, look at the alley -oop. It's like he can hit the light up there. Yeah. So here we go with that massive flare on that smaller quarter pipe. And it's, it, he, he doesn't like have any segregation on which ramps he rides either. He can go huge on the tall ramps, and he can go massive on the small ramps too. But yeah, there's the mess up. And I, I think it's supposed to be a double tail, and, and he had second thoughts on it. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, so Edgar will hold on to his run one score. Fourth place is where he will stay. It's not that bad considering you got a couple of spots there that you know that play around with. Yeah. You know, this is run number two, so we'll see about the run number three. Hey, we're not giving out medals today. We're giving out six spots, and right now he's got one of them. As does Gary Young. He's right behind him in fifth place, picking up the pace though, Scotty. Yeah, the speed was amazing around that bowl point. That's classic Gary Young. Look at that, X up the tabletop. Good move, good combo. All of you, um, look back right there on the hip, right into a uh, toboggan. And look at this, you see how he's tricking everything? Like everything that he approaches, he has an answer for. There's the nose bonk on the pillar again. He's looking really solid right now. I like the way this runs along. Yeah, Whoa, just, he's approaching, look at that, drop it. Oh, that. And then the 270 table on the hip. He, uh, he messed up on the first run on that one. So it's good to see him get the tabletop. And there's, Arguably one of the hardest tricks in the competition, the downside double peg ride from around that bowl corner. Really solid riding. The danger level we're seeing on some of these tricks that he's making look so easy. It's really scary. Oh, it's it's, it's amazing. Look at Gary, he feels good after that run. I don't blame him at all. And uh, a lot of people that might be watching this, you know, not used to BMX for the first time, you know, wondering where Gary's flares, where Gary's double tail ups are. But in BMX, you know, it's not just the flashy tricks that are difficult. There's tricks that are so hard to do, you know, that are that might look easy. Because right. like you can't tell the difference. But us as BMX riders, we we can tell, you know, like that downside double pick line around that bowl corner right there is amazing. I think that's what we're getting right here. So as you can see, he's pumping up and he's locking in the pegs on the top right there. It's, oh, it's, it's really hard. And to pull that bike back in off the pegs is amazing. So he, he settles for an 83 to hold on to his first run score. But as you said, sometimes as fans, we just see a spin it to win it. And that's the most impressive visually. But sometimes the toughest tricks are the ones that seem so simple in nature. Of course, you know, and I, I completely understand that uh, there's so many tricks out there that are definitely really cool looking compared to a downside no peg ride. But, you know, we need to make sure that everybody knows and respects that level of difficulty so guys like Gary Young you know they get the, the respect that they deserve so here's Nick Bruce he won this event last year to earn a spot to X Games Minneapolis right now he's just trying to get in the top six he's in 12. all right well he's stepping up from the first round he landed the trick that took him out and he's looking pretty solid right now Ooh, 270 double tail of that height doing the underflip just like Brandon Lubos did looks like he's got an answer to every ramp right here so let's see how the rest of this run pans out a tail up over the head, heading over to the big part of the course. This is where you're going to see all the big moves. Nice flare transfer. Haven't seen anybody hit that one. All right, he's uh, he's coming to the end of his run. I think he's going to end this one with a really big bang. Let's see what he's got. Ooh, 540 flare. Yes. First time we're seeing that one today. Nick Bruce dropping the hammer on his final trick on run number two. Wow, it's got to feel really good to uh, get back on the saddle, you know, after messing up on your first trick on run number one. It was so cool to see Nick Bruce make his debut here at Road Skate Park last summer, and he took this course by storm and really picking up where he left off in 2017. Yeah, you know, Nick Bruce's riding, you know, it's been in the making for a little while now. We've been waiting for that point where 
he was going to get there, you know, all the big tricks and all the consistency together. And clearly, look at him right now. Run number two was picture perfect, and he did all the biggest tricks. You know, the 540 flare. You know, my favorite trick was definitely probably that flare down, that tail whip. Just because I know how difficult that is, kicking the bike opposite direction and doing it so high off of that ramp. Like, that's not the ideal ramp to be doing that trick off. That's a bank quarter. Like, uh, that's mellow. You shouldn't be going seven foot out doing a flare with an opposite downside tail whip. An 85.66 for Nick Bruce, catapulting him all the way up into third place. Wow. wow. So here's Colton Walker. He's sitting in 11th place, trying to replace that 58. He's got the run to do it. It just went awry midway through, Scotty. Yeah, it was a random you know, accident that went wrong in that one. Like it, was, it was a freak accident, but huge double tail. Straight to a downside tail over the hip. Now he has the ability to do tails both ways. Easy as can be, it's amazing to see. Okay, head over to the quarter pipe. Talk to Henry the Marshal. And he also, he, he can, can add tricks in like at the last second, like especially the bars. So here's, this is the point where he messed up. You know, he's made a pass out, so that's good to see. Like I say, it was a freak accident. His foot just wasn't in the right spot. So with Nick Bruce's last run, that bumped Rizef out of the top six and put Gary Young into the bubble spot. Keep your eye on that six spot. Ooh, flare downside whip, just like Nick Bruce did right there. You know, and that's going to end his run. So I think he, uh, I think he's got a really good situation here when it comes to, you know, doing his best chance to get into the top six to make it onto the big show. So we'll see how the judges reward him. Right now, 83.33 is that six spot score. He would need to best that to get into the finals group. Couple replays right here. Beautiful tuck no hander. You know, sometimes, you know, the most simple moves can be the classic ones that stand out that look the best. And this is the part where he messed up in the first one. You can see his feet are on the pedals. He's riding away. And there's the flare downside tail whip, just like Nick Bruce did, same spot right there. Opposite tail whip, able to find the bike and get it back underneath you while doing a flip 180. It's pretty amazing. So much better than run one and 83.66. That puts Colton Walker into that sixth and final spot and bumps out Gary Young. I think we're going to be seeing you know, that happen a few more times. Yeah, I don't think. Musical chairs is far from over out here today in Boise, especially with run three still right around the corner, but some of the heavy hitters yet to drop in for their second attempt, including that man there, Dennis Enerson, trying to replace that 46.66 from run number one. Yeah, so Dennis, you know, he had a little mess up on the tie ride right there. I saw him doing a couple of practices in between you know, eyeing that thing up, making sure that that didn't go wrong. They were going a nice little exit fast plan on that one. Really, really stylish. Haven't seen that one in a while. And uh, Dennis has the ability, like I was saying earlier, to be able to deliver such big tricks and have so much speed and so much control of everything he rides. Like, just like right there, that little touch that he put on that vert wall. Oh, there's a tie ride. He landed that one perfect this time. So let's see what he's got the rest of his run. Allows him a slingshot around. And Already much better than what we saw in run number one. Yeah, ooh, can can tire grab, Ali over the hip, 270. And uh, we're coming to the end of the run here. How's he gonna finish it? Double bar spin over that big hip right there. Coming towards the end. Wonder what he's gonna be going for here. Got the buzzer. Wall rod two. Oh man. Now I ask you, the buzzer goes before he takes off on that. Would they have counted that and Consequently, not landing it, does that hurt him? So I'm, I'm not the judge, all right? But it depends on how the judges want to, I mean, how they perceive, like that leading up to the trick. Like if the buzzer's going off, like, and they're on the transition, that's going to count, you know? But sometimes the buzzer will go off and it, there might be a little bit ways away. And to Same me, guy. that's poor run planning, you know? And like, uh, and it, it's, 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 a, it's a tough one, whether it should be counted against them or counted, you know, for them if it does go wrong or right. Because, you know, technically, Time is over, but like, how far are you away right. from that jump, how, uh, from that ramp? I, it's, it's, it's it could be a little, su little subjective amongst the judges. It could be. But th that wore the tail that he actually crashed on. That was a really difficult one. He came from a weird angle, and uh, he came really close to landing it. But you know, maybe the second time around, 
or when he gets the complete run trying it, you know, he'll have more um, time, you know, left because maybe maybe something choked him up on the first run that didn't go right. So that was amazing, an 80.33, and that only bumps him up one spot wow. into 11th place. But now, next to drop in our current leader, Michael Laren, with that 87.33. If you saw us run one, then you know no one else is approaching this park wow, quite that. like Michael. See, look at the Grizz there. Nobody's doing that one right there. It's such a rare trick to see. Michael, that's almost a signature move at this point. Huge look back on that quarter right there. Look at the speed he's got. He's got so much momentum. Double downside tail. That's a big up right there. Ooh, he's got the pocket air hanging on there. Ollie of 270, toboggan. And now he's heading over to the slower part of the course. And I say slower because, you know, it's not the deep end. It's not where all the speed is. So uh, it's going to be a tough answer for a lot of the guys to be able to keep momentum and keep the run positive and moving. But Michael's having no problem so far. Tail and over the hip right there. Final five seconds for Michael. Fakey again. He's done it. So it looks like he's ending it the same way he did the first time around. And again, I just can't harp on this enough. It seems like he's having more fun than anybody else, Scotty. And I cannot believe that we haven't seen him compete in park at X Games before. You know what? Well, this new format gives guys like Michael to be able to come out here and show the world just what, how good he is on a bike. And it feels like his transition skills from Vert are being put on display in this event. Definitely. You, you can see him going over to that big quarter pipe when he did that uh, look back. Like, his control is amazing. But he's got these moves right here, like that underflip over that hip. You know, it's a small ramp. And then he does stuff like this. I mean, that's a Vert style quarter pipe, but you don't see anybody doing this on a Vert ramp ever. It's, that's not going to happen anytime soon and he ups the ante in 88.33 for Michael Larity stays in first place amazing it's so great to see Michael just being able to showcase his riding and look at him going over there saying what's up to everybody and he's that kind of guy Jose Torres he's in second place has that 86.66. Michael Laren just added to his score. Can Jose Torres do the same thing and potentially catch Laren here on run two? Massive force with two tucked them hander over the hip. Wow, look at his, his speed and his control. It's so awesome to see. He's a guy from South America. You know, a lot of people, you know, here in the United States would never even have the chance to see ride if it wasn't for a competition like this, getting him to come out here and showcase his riding. But so far, so good. He's looking really solid. Got really unique lines, too. Double downside tail over the hip, heading into the slow part, but he's still got speed. Look at him pumping around that right there. Like, that's difficult to do because that's such a small transition. And it's really interesting to see him incorporate that part into his run as well onto the deck. So let's see how he's going to finish out the run to see if he can up this score at all. Ali tail whip, looking really solid. And there's one foot tabletop at the end. There's just no let up in his riding, Scotty. The pace from trick one to his closer is as quick as anybody else in this field. Oh, it definitely is. You know, that's really important in BMX. You need to be able to start off fast and end fast as well. You gotta be strong and ready for this. But huge double tail of air on that bank quarter. And, uh, here we go. This is going to be the uh, Ali Yub Tuck No Hander. And look at the height. The height is massive. And he's landing at the top of the transition beautifully, carrying speed so well. I'll you tail up over the hip. It's so cool to see the South American rider out here doing it for us. And he increases his score in 87.66, which would have been good enough for first place had not Mikel increased his score on the last run. So second place is where Torres will stay. Wow, it's awesome to see. Like, you know, watching the, the scores coming up and seeing who is getting rewarded, these judges are definitely rewarding the guys that are carrying tons of speed around the whole entire course the whole time and being able to do tricks. So here's Brandon Lupos, our top ranked qualifier. He is currently in fourth place. Okay, Brandon, start things off on the lower part, which is smart because now you get to bring all the speed into the deep end. Nice start to hander. Triple tail whip over the hip again, holding off of that one. He's able to carry on the speed in the run. He's got good uh, Oh, 540 flare oh, on that thing. Ah, wow. And there's that look back. I guess I was right the first time around. 270 double tail whip. A lot of big moves from Brandon. A lot of big moves. 
There's a reason why he was our top ranked qualifier, Scotty. We're seeing it right here, right now. Yeah, you know, he's a really strong rider. You know, he's really tall, so he has the ability to be able to carry himself and hold on to the bike when he lands like that off the flare whip, be able to get speed out of things. And I think that's, that, that really helps you know, when you know how to control yourself, be able to uh, you know, take your energy and be able to pump with it. A strong run, too, for Lupos, who's just really been at home here at Road Skate Park all week. Yeah, he definitely, you know, upped his first run trick-wise. You know, he added the 540 player on that one ramp. And um, look at right here, he's doing the wall slap on the pillar. And that, I, for me, I think it's a good start to the run because that's starting at the top and going towards the deep end. Beautiful triple tail up over the hip. Landed a little bit lower right there, but he still carries speed. And I think his ability of being strong is, is the factor to that. There's the under flip going up that transition. Such a small transition. It's not even as long as a bike, and he's able to fit his bike in there pretty smooth. And there's the flare whip towards the end of the run right there. Wow. So we think he improved upon his run one. He did just that at 87.33, jumping him up a spot in the third place. Yeah, you know what? I, I think it's, uh, it's safe to say that the judges are rewarding these guys that are bringing speed around the whole entire course. So let's see if the guys are influenced by that. We're two runs in, and it's still Michael Laren leading the way with that 88.33. Super top heavy, though, as you see. The top six are the ones you got to keep your eyes on as we get ready for third and final runs. It's Colton Walker sitting in that elimination spot with that 83.66. Everyone out here, though, chasing Michael Laren. Will he take the top spot heading into X Games Mini? Welcome back to the Road to X Games. It's our BMX Park Final. And what a show we've seen so far, Scotty Kramer. Michael Laren is the story of this contest, just upping the ante as he stays in first place. Oh, it's amazing to see Michael out here just representing BMX in such a positive way. Huge air, huge tricks, and just a smile on his face the whole time, such a, setting such a good example out there. It's crazy to think that only six guys are getting into this thing because of the 12 riders. We've got 11 who have scored in the 80s or higher. Yeah, it's it's... This third run is going to be huge right here, you know, and this is the playoffs, you know, to getting into the X Games right now. And this could be more stressful than the actual big show itself because yeah. it all comes down to these next runs. Yeah, absolutely. We will see if anyone can catch Michael, Mikel Laren, Dennis Anderson on the outside looking in right now, but he's no stranger to X Games stages, to X Games podiums. Let's learn a little bit more about Anderson. I've been going to X Games, I think the first one I might have been 16 or 17, so it's going on 10 or 11 years of going to every single one. Just a good contest, they always build cool different courses, it's nice that they have street, park and dirt. For me, I've just always like legit enjoyed riding everything. I know all these people who just ride park or just ride street or just ride dirt, like I could never do that. I enjoy it all, but I can't just do the same thing over and over and I think that's kind of why I've turned into like an all around rider over the years. This park's really cool. It's kind of like a flowier course, and there's a lot of big trick guys here, so it'll be interesting to see like where the judges are putting people, because it can kind of go either way, I think. So, I mean, I'm always grateful for just being invited to X Games, but all the silver medals I've had, I'm stoked on those, too. But the day, two years ago, when I won, I don't know, I just woke up really, really feeling, like, just felt good, really wanted to ride that day, and everything worked out, and just was just, like, pulling everything I wanted to pull. But this year, I feel like I've been riding a bunch and just trying to to stay on it as much as possible. So I think this year, I feel even better than last year. Well, he 
says he feels good. Hopefully he brings it on his third and final run because he's got some work to do sitting in 11th place there. As you see, all eyes on that sixth spot. We've been saying it all day, Scotty. Colton Walker currently clinging to that final spot to get into X Games Minneapolis, but it all shakes out here on third and final run. Yeah, this is what it's going to be coming down to. These guys are going to be bringing their A game. This is their last chance to be able to get their you know, ticket to go to Minneapolis. And this is going to be huge right here. I think we're going to be seeing the guys up the ante. But the seriousness of this event, you know, it's, it's going to change drastically because it comes down to this moment. Pat Casey put down an 80.66 on run number one, then added a point to that on run number two. Tenth place is where he sits. As you saw, Colton Walker sitting in that sixth spot. He would need to best an 83.66. Third and final run starts right now. All right, so here we go. Pat Casey is bringing some big air to the course. He did that massive tabletop. And let's see what he's going to do. How is he going to up the ante? I'm so curious to see. I'm, I'm wondering if he's going to use his free coaster and do one of his crazy, you know, never before seen free coaster moves that he's capable of. Huge double tail alley oop over the hip. He's got a good flow going though. You know, things are working out for him. Okay, on to the pillar. He's going to be heading back down to the big section, and that's where we're going to see all the big moves. So nice flip over the hip. And over to the bowl corner, there's that double tail whip that we were talking about earlier. Nobody's doing that one. That's an amazing move. Flare whip, ooh, and pulling that one at the buzzer right there. So, you know what? If you're going to up the ante, you got to bring your big tricks like that. And Pat's doing so. Again, Colton Walker with that 83.66 is in that sixth and final spot to get on to X Games Minneapolis. Was this enough to crash that party? Well, he's got some big moves. He's got the 270 double tail up right there. And he's bringing the flip over the hip, heading back in. I, I, mean, I, I think he definitely upped the ante, but let's see what the judges think. Here's the moment right there. You're just waiting. You, you were just trying to see if it's going to happen. And 81 for Pat Casey, so he'll hold on to his run to score. His day is done. He will not be moving on. That's just how cutthroat this group is out here today, Scott. BMX Park, out of all the BMX disciplines, is the most competitive one for sure. I mean, there's always a podium changing. There's always a new rider that's coming in and taking a gold medal. I mean, this is just, we're seeing it live right now. Prime example, Chase Hawk. He's got a gold medal in this event from 2014, but he's currently in 12th place. It's BMX Park for you, it really is. But you know what? Chase is going to up the ante right now. Let's see if he's got what it takes to push himself above. You know, he had a little mess up on that manual 180 you know you got to risk it for, for these kind of situations so we'll see if he goes back to that one his best score of the day is 77.66 trying to get into that top six here it is oh he put the front wheel down but you know what it's not over yet though you know he's still able to continue on you know it's definitely not going to get you know the credit that he wanted to get but you know what he's waving it off right there yeah see it's, it's hard to watch that because me, I want to sit there and yell at Chase and shake him at the shoulders and say, drop in, keep on going. You know, but sometimes riders, you know, they're so, such big critics on their own riding that they're they're like, yeah, I'm not good enough. This isn't going to happen. I'm just going to call it right now. Well, and, and you said it, the psyche sometimes of even a single trick, if it's not ridden the way he wants to ride it, then the run is moot at that point. It's the truth. You know, all he did was put his front wheel down on a manual, and that was it. Eric Rizev, he's sitting in eighth place right now, trying to get into that top six, had a very good run one score, was actually leading the contest outright early on run number one. Now he's on the outside looking in. So Eric's got some big moves. He's got ability to squeeze in so many tails and bar spins in one air. And I think he's gonna be going that route in this next round. There's the Ali Barsman over the hip. Barsman on the big quarter, and this is where we're gonna see some tricks. Oh Triple tail with, oh, he didn't get the pedals, man. Eric Rizev may oh. cause motion sickness. Man, that's where he had trouble on the first run, but he had, you know, he had even worse trouble on the third run. He couldn't find the pedals on that triple tail whip. That triple tail whip, and, and he lands it 
but then it's the after that was really giving him trouble in two of his three runs today as we take another look at his third and final run. Yeah, so you see that the rotation looks good, but as he catches it, the bike gets away from him, and he's a brakeless rider, so he catches it with his front foot, and when you have no brakes on your bike and your foot's already on that pedal, your pedals are gonna tend to move. Um, so like the, the, the goal is to grab the bike and then put both feet on at the same time, so it's rough to see. Heartbreaker for Eric as he will not be moving on. Daniel Dares in ninth place right now has steadily improved from run one to run two. What can he do here on that third and final run? If he does, if he does what he did from run one to run two, he would be in the finals with a two-point increase. We'll see if he can do it. Yeah, I mean, I think that the one thing that might have been bothering his score was the fact that too many double tail ups. But I don't know if he's going to change the route at all. We'll see. He's a smart rider, you know, he's a veteran. So if anybody's gonna, you know, be able to catch on to the differences, it's gonna be him. But so far, so good. He's mixing it up a little bit. Didn't see that, uh, that downside tail up in the first one. And now we're heading over towards that hip where he did that 450 double tail up. So I'm curious to see if he's gonna change that one out at all and maybe switch it up to something different. Oh, there's that flare variation we were talking about, that flare table when he crosses the bike up. So that was changed out compared to the first run. And that could be the variety he needs. We'll see what the judges think. So we're going towards the end of the run right now. Flair no hander, and that was a better extension than he did the, the, on the second run, that's for sure. So. so he cleaned some things up. He showed a little bit of variety, editing a few tricks midway through the run. As you said, maybe no one more veteran in this format than Daniel Dares. He knows exactly what he needs to do. Now the question is, was that enough to put him into the top six? So here's the replays right here. There's the alley -oop double tail. We've seen that one in the other run, and it's amazing that he's able to pull that one over and over again. There's a flare tail whip. You know, we've seen a couple of those today, and that's like almost a requirement. If you're going to be doing flares variations, you need to have the flare tail whip when it comes to BMX Park. Trying to replace that 82.66. Again, Colton Walker holding on to that spick spot with an 83.66. He'd need to best that to get into the finals group. There you see Colton. Will he stay in the finals group? So here we go. He's waiting on this score to come in. I can see, I can only imagine what's going through his mind right now. That was his last chance to be able to make it to X Games, you know, through this qualifier. So let's see what, he's, let's see what comes up. Split screen. Did he do enough? An 83.66. Wow. Yes. So is this a tiebreaker situation right here? We'll get official wording on that. So that's the same score as Colton Walker. Wow. And I think what it boils down to at this point is his second oh, <laughs> highest score is higher than Colton Walker's second highest score. But again, Colton Walker still has a third and final attempt to drop yes. in. I mean, the ball is in his court. We're going to see how he responds to that one. But man, Daniel Dare's got to feel really good after that. You know, he's worked hard. And, you know, considering he's been, you know, riding X Games since 2006, I believe, was his yep. first one. Just think about that. It was 12 years of this competition over and over again. And he's got five gold medals. Larry Edgar, he's sitting in the five spot. He's got to be feeling good, but there's still a couple of guys bumped out that could shake things up. He'd love to give himself a little bit more breathing room. Of course, I mean, who wouldn't in this kind of situation? I mean, Larry, he's been bothering, you know, he's battling a shoulder injury a little bit, but it doesn't seem to be slowing him down. Huge tail transfer to start things off. Very unique setup right there. So right now, Dares is the bubble boy sitting in that six spot, bumping out Walker. Okay, so Larry's bringing a lot of big Whoa. speed. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is so crazy. I should know it's coming, but it still scares me every time, Scott. Oh, it's like you're at like a scary movie. You know the part's coming. You should be ready for it, but you, you can't you can't. I hold still back. jump. Wow, huge run. I mean he's he's looking really good compared to his other runs, so we'll see how he ends this one. Heading over to the smaller quarter play. There's a double downside tail. Oh, just missing feet right now. I hope I didn't jinx him on that one. His uh, foot just couldn't get to the pedal where it needed to be to be riding away. But you know what? If, as in any situation you want to be in, it, it, his is not a bad situation at all. Edgar, of course, made his X Games debut last summer, came in 12th place at U.S. Bank Stadium in this same event. Now 
he's just trying to get back there. Oh man, look at that hair over the hip. So cool to see. So much power, so much style as well. Just classic tabletop, clicking it, holding it for, feels like an eternity. Huge flare on that smaller quarter pipe. And here's where things went wrong. He did that double tail off, but his feet didn't get on the pedals the way they needed to be. The pedals moved, and you can't secure and ride away. And sometimes nothing more intoxicating during a run than amplitude. And of Larry course. Edgar's got that over the rest of the crowd. Of course, I mean, that's why he's winning, you know, these bands, you know, bowl competitions, because of his height. It's amazing. So we move on to Gary Young. He's sitting in eighth place, trying to get into that top six. Daniel Dares holding on to that final spot right now with the 83.66. Gary, just like Michael, just such a unique line out there. I guess a question for you, how do these unique lines separate a guy like Gary amongst the judging panel? Yeah, it, you know, it's a good question. And I think that Gary needs to kind of just up the ante on his tricks maybe a little bit, you know, uh, just put a little bit more difficulty into a couple of them over, you know, the hips, and that might separate him a little bit. But everything besides that, I think he's got the best runs, um, you know, quality of direction uh, of the day, in my opinion. And the level of difficulty on certain tricks, like, the, like we were talking about that grind around the corner. Here he goes transferring in right there. 270 tabletop over the hip. Like, that That line is more unique than anybody on the course. So, I mean, I think he can get rewarded heavily if he keeps this run going. So, look at that alley 270. Look back over the hip. Perfect. And he did that. Um, oh, hang And he on. rides away. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. That was a close one right there. Very close. Laughing it off and is able to stay on his pedals. So again, an 83.33, that's his high score. Good enough for eighth as we take another look at the replays. Is this enough to jump him into the top six? In my opinion, I think he definitely upped everything. Look at he's landing perfect here. He's, he's got that landing going on to the next one. He's doing, you know, what I say is the hardest part in the whole competition, the downside double peg grind. And it's, it's he had an answer for everything that he approached on this run. And you know, he even ended it on this on the edge of our seats right here on that rollout, which he started leaning to his side. So I would not be surprised if he gets a good good score on this one. There you see Daniel there sitting in that bubble position. Did Gary Young bump him out of the top six? And remember, Daniel Dare's day is done. If he gets bumped out, he does not have another attempt. So the judges are taking some time. So uh, <laughs> that could be a good thing. I mean, most people see it that way. You know, they're going over the run to make sure that, you know, everything is deserving. Oh. An 84.33 for Gary Young, jumping him up into that sixth spot and bumping out Daniel Dares. Yeah, I had a feeling that that run was gonna get rewarded on that because he, he had a good solid run. I think that out of all of his runs, it was pretty clear that that was his best run. So now the question becomes, will Gary hold on to that spot? The top four have officially clinched. Michael, Jose, Brandon, and Nick, no one can touch them. They might shuffle a little bit when it's all said and done with positioning, but they're moving on to Minneapolis. Five and six still up for grabs. Here's Nick Bruce. He's already qualified into X Games Minneapolis. He's in that four spot. He's safe. This one is effectively for the fans here at Road Skate Park. But I don't know if he knows that right now. He may not. He might not know that because all he's focused on is doing his best run. And I don't think he has anybody in his ear doing the math and figuring that all out just like we are. And he may not want to know <laughs> that. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. Come on. The, the craziest trick of the competition so far. Flair, tail whip, times two. That was right insane. Out the game. Yeah, so he didn't get the memo, but Nick, you know what? You gotta enjoy warn this. us <laughs> when you're gonna do something like that. Oh my goodness. So he's gonna... Uh, we gotta collect ourselves here. <laughs> Scotty blown. and I are picking our jaws up off the floor here in the booth. Double tail up over the hip. Huge, I like that flare transfer. That's a really unique line off of that hip part that's sticking out into the quarter. And he does not know he qualified yet. And you're still gonna get the goods. <laughs> Someone needs to tell Nick. Oh, oh man. Tell him 
them. We I need was to tell just them right going now. to say, <laughs> Nick, we're not giving out a gold medal here today. Somebody needs to tell him right now that he's already qualified because that run was, he does not know yet. And that run was going insane leading up to it. So, oh, man, that was huge. Right out the gate. Here it is. Look at this double tail whip in a flare off of that bank thing. So much power. That takes so much control to do that move. Here's another double tail whip um, in a 270 variety over the hip. And this is that flare transfer that I like a lot. Look at he's he's carving off of that mellow bar into the steep quarter. But right here he didn't pull out enough and he wasn't away from the transition enough to fit his bike onto it with his wheels facing down the way he needed to be. And that's the, the problem when it comes to riding concrete quarter pipes. They tend to be a little bit slippery, more slippery than you know a wooden ramp, so to say. So you have to be that much better at landing your tricks. So Nick Bruce is coming back to X Games. We're all excited to see that. And if that's a precursor of what's to come, podium from last year, look out. Of course, he's always one of the guys to watch because he brings the biggest tricks in every competition he rides. Whether it be dirt, whether it be park, he's got the moves and he's got the confidence to be trying the tricks. An 81.66, so he'll hold on to his run two score. <laughs> Colton Walker, he's sitting in eighth place. He was in the top six. He got bumped by Dares, who then got bumped by Gary Young. Colton Walker is one of two guys left who can crash that top six party. He's got to do it right now. So Colton's got the weight of, of the world on his shoulders right now. You know, this is coming down the crunch time. Oh my goodness, he did the double tail with the bar speed. <laughs> he's stepping up to the occasion so far. He's looking really solid. All right, there goes the 270 get down over the hip. Tuck and hand the bar spin. Good flow, good control so far. He's on the right track to do what he needs to do. All right, there's the downside tail over the hip. He missed the bar spin, but that's okay. He's upped it already, so I think it's a good trade off. You know, sending the double tail of the bar spin and trading it off with that uh, three downside tail of the bar spin. So he's still good in my eyes. Okay, good flow, good speed. And there's that downside tail of flare, pulling it even better than the last one, which is really cool to see. And that'll be it right there, so the tail of transfer. We know Colton Walker will be competing at X Games Minneapolis as he tries to defend his gold in BMX dirt. But will he be adding Park into the mix? Was that enough? to get him in to the top six. So in my opinion, watching that run, he definitely upped the ante by doing that double tail up to Barsman on that big quarter pipe. And that was, for me, you know, one of the standout tricks. So it's good that he landed that one. And he did, he, he, I wouldn't say messed up, but like, I know, I think he was gonna be going for that three downside tail up to Barsman and that didn't work out. But here's that, my favorite trick of the run. Double tail up to late Barsman on that quarter pipe. And he had so much speed the whole time as well. There's, here's the part that he was missing the bar spin on, but I don't think it's gonna really hurt his score that much because I, I would trade the one with the other easily. And he landed good transition on that flare downside tail compared to the last run as well. So, so it comes down to this. Gary Young is sitting in that sixth place spot. No longer an 85.33 puts Walker into fifth and that bumps out Gary Young. And with that, Walker clinches a spot. He'll be competing at Park in Minneapolis. Wow. Look at this, man. It's coming down to this right now. Oh, my goodness. So Gary Young gets bumped out, which puts Larry Edgar, amazingly enough, into the bubble spot. This is amazing. So we have, we have somebody who has you know, a big run coming up ahead of him to, to be able to get these guys, you know, back one spot at least. There we see Dennis Enerson. He is the final rider that's the outside looking in that can shake things up. Larry Edgar's got a kung fu grip on that sixth and final spot. Will he hold on to it? I mean, this is Dennis Enerson. This guy is no stranger to being able to step up in situations like this. Huge tail transfer, really good start to his run. The flow is there. That is definitely a key point to this. I mean, the judges seem to be rewarding guys that have good flow. So far, so good. Double tie ride, successful this time, which is awesome to see. Pumping around the bull corner, look at the speed he's carrying. Nice uh, tabletop one-hander over the hip. Which is the hip again. Can't can't tire grab. Really classically cool trick. Difficult as well. Barspin to Barspin transfer. Final five seconds for Dennis. So this is it. What's he going to end this with? Oh, he's going for that tail again. 
right there at the bottom of the transition. And he pulls it, he pulls it. He pulls it after the buzzer, which begs the same question I asked you on run number two. He doesn't land it. We wondered if he would be punished for it. Now he does land it. Does he get the points? In my opinion, seeing how the judges scored his other run, I think that they are going to count it because I felt like that weighed against him, you know, the mess up on his second run. He had a really good run. You know, the fact that he didn't, you know, the, the buzzer went off, you know, on his way to that ramp. I don't, I don't know how, what the distance is. I don't know if there is a distance or because, you know, you never know. A skate park is going to be different than any other place. But, I mean, it was a really great run. Not only does he have the ability to get into the top six, he could even move up even higher than that with the, that kind of run. So that magic number, an 85 on the dot, that's what Larry Edgar has. That's what Anderson would need to best to get into the top six. He seems to be feeling pretty good about that run. Do you think it's enough to get him in there and bump out Edgar? I think he's fully capable of it, but we're, we're hanging on this one right now. It's a moment of truth. He's stuck on that. <laughs> he's heard stuck from him. That. You heard from him. He, he must have heard us talking about it. Will the judges think that that is enough from Dennis Ennerson? Oh, man. This is one of those white knuckle moments that you just always seem to happen at every X Games, even in a qualifying event like this one here in Boise. A spot on the line to X Games Minneapolis. Did Dennis Anderson do enough? Oh man, this is taking a while. I'm happy. I'm happy. And the score comes in in an 85.33. He does on his final attempt. And he gets into the sixth place mark on that one. You called it. Dennis Anderson did just enough to squeak into the top six. He takes over the fifth spot. And with that, Larry Edgar officially eliminated. What a moment here. He saved his best for last. Dennis Anderson climbing up the ladder and getting into that finals group. So our six are set. We've still got three riders left to drop, but there are top three so far. Michael, Jose, and Brandon. That one's just for bragging rights, but a heartbreaker for Larry Edgar as he gets bumped out on that final run from Dennis. Wow, but look at Michael Laren right now. He's got to be feeling like a million bucks, man. He knows he's in X Games Minneapolis for BMX Park. He's got to be so proud of that one, and he's still going to be delivering. You know he's going to not let up right now. He's going to put a show on for this Boise crowd for sure. Well said, partner. So far, sitting in first place. He was in first place after run number one, first place after run number two. What's he got for the fans here in Boise on his final attempt? All right, so starting off just like the other runs, tons of speed, tons of energy, and there's where the vert credentials pay off. Huge look back on that big quarter pipe. Carrying it over to the double downside tail up as well. Going over the, ooh, nice, adding a no-hander in there. <laughs> he hasn't done that one in the last two runs. He, he might even up his other score. We'll see how this one goes. Good lines, though. That's what I got to say about my Cal. Really good lines and consistent flow throughout. And I think that's so important to BMX Park. I mean, you have to be able to bring the momentum and carry it through and have, you know, the speed to answer. All right, we had a little mess up right there. You know what? It's only right that he had at least one mess up for today. And I love that it happened right next to the judges, and he looked <laughs> over and gave him a chuckle, and they responded with the same. Yeah, what an awesome day for Michael. So happy for him, so proud, proud of his riding. And look at this beautiful textbook. Look back, twisting that bike up and just... And here's the double downside sail whip, huge air. And you know what? When, you, when you're doing a, a big air event on the on the mega ramp and you get that kind of air, you're used to that. So it's only right that he that he goes over the hip and does a double downside sail whip at height. Well, Michael will be making his eighth X Games appearance next month, but his first debut in BMX Park in Minneapolis at US Bank Stadium. A long time coming. And after watching him today, all I can say is, what took him so long? I'm wondering the same thing about this contest format, though. This gives people like Mike Hell the opportunity to be able to, you know, showcase his riding to the world. So Mike Hell holding on to that 88.33 from his run two score, sitting in first place.
Here's Jose Torres, who's just ridden so well today, Scotty. Hard to believe he's in second place, but that's just how well Michael has been riding. Could he potentially try to leapfrog Michael and take the top spot? <laughs> Judging by this guy's style, I think so. I don't think he's going to be okay with just uh, making it into X Games. I think he wants to put an exclamation point out there, you know, and let BMX know that he's here and he is ready to try his hardest, you know, to get on the podium on the real big event. Wow, huge. That was unbelievable, huge right there. That camera angle did that so much justice as well. The alley you tail whip over the hip. Oh, this has been such a treat to watch him ride today. Whoa, no. Oh no. Wow. I hope he's okay right there. Let's yeah. See. He went down so hard. He you landed hate to really low. see a guy fall like he did in midair. Good to see him popping up though right away. Seems to be grabbing at his arm or wrist. We don't want to speculate, but medical attending to him. He's putting together such a great run though, Scott. Yeah, let's see what went wrong right here. It looks like he went to go kick the downside tail whip, but the bike wasn't there to kick. And oh. look at this, he's falling backwards and he lands oh, on the yeah, left on and that his, left his hands wrist. there. Oh yeah, that oh. took all the weight of that fall. Oh man, it's it's always terrible to see you know a rider with so much momentum you know go down like that. That was in a way a victory run, you know, so yeah. to speak, because he's already qualified right now. But you know what, in BMX, you have that kind of energy, you know, running from this kind of crowd, and it's hard to hold yourself back. You know, you want to go put on a, a show for everybody that's right. in the audience as well. So, I mean, in different kind of sports, whether it be you know. Look, the NFL has a victory formation, you right. know? If BMX, we don't do that. We yeah. just go out there and we, we ride. It's finding that balance of you know you're already in, now you're doing something for the fans, and there's no doubt that that wrist, that hand, he's feeling it. But to see him out there walking it off, Boy, you just hope he's okay and that we'll be able to see him next month in Mini. Yeah, I mean, this guy, he's got so much heart. This guy is tough as nails. You can tell just by his riding style. You don't go that high and get that good from, from holding back. You know, you've experienced situations like that. Our final rider to drop in. He was our top-ranked qualifier. He's sitting in third place, Brandon Lupos. All right, Brandon heading in. I don't know if this guy's going to hold back either. He's got all these tricks so consistent, and I see him do them at practice all the time. So I think he's going to put a show on for the crowd and see if he can up the ante. And, you know, sometimes, you know, as a BMX rider, you want to be able to do that for yourself because BMX, as much as we are competing against other people when we're riding, you got to beat yourself first. You're, you need to conquer, you know, what's going on in your mind to be able to get those tricks done. So that's how I always see BMX. It's more of a going against yourself rather than going against your fellow riders. But it just goes to show you see everybody hugging each other and high-fiving each other right. after their runs. And we all respect each other. It's great to hear this road skate park audience come alive, especially after the massive fall that Jose Torres just took. And Lupos is putting on a show here to end this thing right. Yeah, so Brandon Lupos did a flare work for the Boise crowd, you know, even though he's already qualified, that's the kind of BMX riders that are out here today. The ones that have so much heart, and these guys want to ride their bikes. So Brandon Lupos, of course, moving on to X Games Minneapolis, and I just can't say enough about this contest, and in particular, the third and final runs here, Scotty, to see all the moving, all the shaking, the leapfrogging on that sixth spot. Colton Walker, who ended up qualifying six, was in and then out and then back in and then had to hold for dear life, and he moves on as that last guy in. Yeah, we both knew that that was going to happen, you know, like when we were leading into this event, because that's a situation, you know? These guys are, are going to be battling and bringing their best tricks out here today. And our final standings from the Road to BMX Park Final, it's Michael Laren with that 88.33 set in the pace, and that top six in gold are moving on to Minneapolis. I'm so excited to see the Minneapolis event. This is going to be amazing. Just judging by these top six guys, just alone, look at these names. This is a who's who of BMX right now. And as we set off the top, there were gonna be some big names that wouldn't be moving on. Chase Hawk, a former gold medalist, Gary Young, Daniel Dares, Larry Edgar. It just goes to show where park riding is. 
in 2018. Yeah, there's three gold medalists, three part gold medalists right there that didn't qualify. Come on! That's unbelievable. But quietly, we've ushered in a new era when you look at guys like Brandon Lupos and Jose Torres, who you met for the first time today, qualifying second overall. It's, it's an awesome opportunity that the X Games has given these guys this qualifier. And you just can't say enough about Michael Laren's day. Just really extraordinary. It was a guy that we knew had the talent to move on to Minneapolis, and that got actualized out here. Let's send it down to the third member of our team, Diana Dog. Solid runs and showing he's having so much fun all day long, putting down some, I mean, amazing tricks. Got the crowd going. How does it feel, Michael? I'm just stoked, man. It was just so much fun being out here and hanging with everybody, and everybody wrote great. and. I'm I can't say much more than that. I'm just really stoked. This is your first park event. What was it like going up against athletes like these? You know, you know what's fun is that like I ride with most of these guys regularly, which is fun. And so, competition-wise, it's, like, it's kind of more of a session. You know what I mean? And so, I just you know, again, super stoked to be out here, and it was just fun being able to kick it with everybody and uh, just just smile the whole time. You know? Well, he has the bragging rights. We're going to see him at Minneapolis. Michael Laren, top qualifier, road to X Games. We're going to be seeing you in Minneapolis. Congratulations. And you heard him say it there, Scotty. The camaraderie of this park field cannot be overstated. No, of course. These guys all respect each other. And, you know, when that contest isn't happening, we're going to be showing up at skate parks and we're going to be riding together right. and motivating each other to be doing, you know, with the best that we possibly can. And again, maybe the story of the day was Dennis Anderson starting off really low at 11th place and being able to walk his way up all the way in to the top six. That was really special, but so many memorable moments. Nick Bruce certainly putting on a show. And all of the top six in this field just so well deserving, Scotty. No, that's completely, I, you can't argue that. You know, no matter who you are, BMX, you are going to be watching this event and you're going to be knowing these are the best guys out there. So our top six are set. Let's send it back down to Diana, who's with our final group. It was pretty much the X Games before the X Games. We have Jack Matroni coming in here, handing out the official six tickets. And first off is Dennis Anderson. Coming in with a solid run, Colton Walker. Fourth qualifier here, Nick Bruce. And we're headed to your podium third top qualifier here, Brandon Lupo. Finishing up here second today and voicing some amazing tricks. Thank God he's okay. Jose Torres. And nothing but smiles. Your top qualifier voicing Michael Larry. Your winner, big round of applause, Brandon Scotty, back to you. I look at this group, Scotty, and I just, uh, someone's got to warn our podium from last year. These guys are coming in hot, they're coming in ready, and any of those guys can medal in Minneapolis. No, that's completely right. You know, I'm so excited to see what the course looks like in Minneapolis and see, you know, what style of riding it might cater to the most. Because any of these guys, like you're saying, has the ability to get on that podium. Wow, just a special moment, and what a qualifier we had out here at Road Skate Park. The BMX Park Final was one for the ages. So much moving and shaking on that third and final run. But at the end of the day, it was Michael Laren setting the pace. For Diana Dahlgren and Jack Matroni, along with Scotty Kramer, I'm Brandon Graham saying thanks for watching. <laughs>